The Queen is Coming for Tea. This book is written by Linda Ravin Lodding. Pictures by Constanze von Klitzing. The Queen is Coming to Tea. One day, there was a knock at Ellie's door. There stood the Queen's footman. A message from Her Royal Highness. He offered Ellie a note on a silver tray. May I please come for tea? Sincerely yours, the Queen herself. We'd be honored, said Ellie. She turned to her elephant. But we don't have much time to prepare, do we? Langley? Langley didn't seem concerned. Pish posh, Ellie said. We can do it. She turned to the footman. The Queen is welcome to tea, she said. But I must get cake. Spend the fairest idea, said the footman. The Queen does love cake. Straight away, Ellie grabbed Langley and hopped on a plane to Paris. They skipped past the Eiffel Tower to La Patisserie. She whips up the best cream filled cakes in the world, Ellie told Langley. Tres delicious, agreed Chef. And home they flew with the cake and Chef. Who wanted to meet the Queen? A little while later, the Queen's footman knocked again. When, Mademoiselle, would tea be served? Soon, said Ellie. I must hurry and get the tea. Grand, said the footman. The Queen does love tea. So Ellie and Langley hopped on a rickshaw and hightailed it to China to visit Ming. Ming makes the best tea, she told Langley. The tea leaves are shaped like a dragon's tongue. Best tea, agreed Ming. And home they went with the tea and Ming, who wanted to meet the queen. They hadn't been home but a moment when the queen's footman arrived. When will tea be served, mademoiselle? Soon, said Ellie. I must get some lemons for her tea. Smashing idea, said the footman. The queen does love lemon with tea. I know just the spot, Ellie said to Langley. Then they landed in Italy. They hired a car and a driver. Ellie didn't trust Langley behind the wheel. To Amalfi Coast, pronto, Ellie instructed Lugi, her driver. Once there, they plucked a bushel of lovely limoni. That's the Italian word for lemons, she told Langley. Langley said he knew this already. And home they went with the lemons and Lugli, who wanted to meet the queen. Moments after they have arrived home, there was tap 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 on the door. Good day, said the queen's footman. And before the footman could ask, Ellie said, Soon, but I can't wear these clothes to tea with the queen. I must have a fancy dress. Of course, said the footman. The queen wouldn't have it any other way. Ellie and Langley hailed a taxi to New York City and marched into Miss Twinkle's dressing rooms at the ballet. Excuse me, Miss Twinkle. She was the prima ballerina and an old friend of Ellie's. Might I borrow your fluffiest, fanciest, frilliest tutu? Miss Twinkle presented Ellie with her most glamorous tutus. Ellie and Miss Twinkle pirouetted all the way home to meet the Queen. Lagley took a taxi. He wasn't so light on his toes. The trio got back just in time to meet the Queen's footman. When, he asked, tea will be served at two o'clock, said Ellie. Ellie and her friends set the table with flowers in the finest china. They hung 
out the ribbons around Ellie's bedroom. They sent out the cake, the teapot, the lemons, and waited for two o'clock. While they waited, they ate, just ate a little piece of cake and drank just a little tea, and Langley ate just one lemon. Too many, and he gets a sour tummy. Then they started to play and dance, giggle, and prance. Before Ellie realized, they had eaten nearly all the cake, drank nearly all the tea, and they were so tired from playing and dancing, giggling and prancing, they all fell sound asleep. No one heard the doorbell ring. No one except Ellie. Ellie and the Queen had a tea for two. And they both loved that. The next morning, Ellie saw a note on her door. May I come today for a feast? Sincerely yours, the king himself. Straight away, Ellie grabbed Langley and hopped on a plane to Paris.